So what's good YouTube? I just want to do a quick video about uh, Gyroflow and more specifically about the Gyroflow plugin for DaVinci Resolve and maybe help you out with a workflow that I discovered for myself uh, which I'm super happy about because it took me quite a while to figure out how I gonna implement it in my workflow because so far I was never really happy with the existing workflow that I was using of like taking my shots uh, mostly I'm talking about my FPV shots where I'm using Gyroflow for um, pulling them down from the GoPro, putting them on my computer, throw them into the Gyroflow software, stabilize them, export them most of the time in uh, ProRes, any flavor of ProRes. That led to a lot of problems for me that I was not happy about. So first of all, I had to run two different programs beside my DaVinci Resolve, my NLE. I had to have Gyroflow running. And I mean, that's not a huge issue, but I just wasn't a fan of it. The biggest pain point for me was, of course, um, I mean, I wanted to protect my colors. Uh, that's the reason why I bought the GoPro 11, that I have a 10-bit color. For that, I have to export them in Gyroflow in a ProRes flavor. And that just turns the file sizes insanely big. So like from, let's say we have a file that is uh, 5 gigabytes uh, originally and then you throw them throw it through uh, gyroflow and you get a like 30 or 40 gigabit file out of it in a prores flavor even in the prores lt flavor um, and yeah that always annoyed me because it was just not efficient enough for me so for those of you that uh, don't have gyroflow yet let me just quickly show you where you can get it so you just go to Gyroflow, the official web page, which is uh, gyroflow.xyz. And then, as you can see, uh, we just go to download. And it's already recommending the software type for my OS, which is, I, I'm on Mac, so that would be this one here. And so for that, you can download the whole desktop version. I still recommend that, even if you're planning to use the plugin for DaVinci. Because as I said, you never know, you run into an issue, something doesn't work with the plugin, you still can uh, fall back on the official desktop version as a uh, plan B. But for the plugin, you just uh, scroll down to here and then choose uh, your operating system. Again, for me, it would be Mac OS and you can download the plugin and install it. Um, how you get the DaVinci Resolve plugin into DaVinci, I'm not gonna cover that in this video. There are enough other videos out there uh, that show you those this process. So let's just jump straight into DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna walk you through the issues I faced before and how I solved it. All right, so now we're in DaVinci Resolve and let's say I just want to take this shot here and do a quick reel out of it uh, with this FPV shot that I filmed recently. Um, so that would mean I want to do a 9x16 and so this is a 8x7 uh, ratio and it's a 50 frames per second uh, shot as you can see here. So in that case, I will go to my 9x16 um, timeline with uh, 25 FPS for the export as I'm in Euro Europe. And then, I mean, right, I would just pull it into the timeline. Don't have audio. So we have my shot here, uh, unstabilized. That's how it looks before any treatment. So straight out of camera, straight out of the GoPro 11. Um, no hyper smooth on like just how Gyroflow wants it. I think that was shot, I shoot it in wide or even a bit wider. Yeah, as you can see, it's not stabilized. So let's go about that, right? So we just go to effects. Um, by the way, that's where you will find your Gyroflow plugin when you installed it correctly, just in the effects section. I saved it in my uh, favorites tab and then you just can go and grab it, drag it onto your footage, and then if you have the inspector open, um, that's how your Gyroflow plugin will look like. And now you could just uh, press load for current file, make sure that your file is highlighted, so it chooses that one, and suck. And now did you just see what happened there? Like the crop in was quite brutal, so we lost a lot of uh, field of view. And we can also check that while, when we turn this on, the stabilization overview. So it punched in quite a lot, especially if I compare before and after. 
And let's play this section uh, back again. So what I can see is, and that's the problem that I got a lot of times and why I didn't use the plugin and always use the desktop version, you can already see there's a lot of things wrong with the footage. Like the distortion is horrible, the cropping is way too strong and it, it's not even stabilized. Like it's still shaky, uh, it's not what I get out of the desktop version. And there's a couple reasons for that, or let's say a couple things how you can avoid that. So first of all, what I learned is that it's really important that your timeline is in the same ratio as your shot. Um, so this timeline is a 9x16 format, and that was the first mistake. And beside the ratio, it's also important that it has the same um, frames per second. So as we saw, this is a 50 frames per second shot, so my, I need to make sure that my timeline is also 50 frames per second. And that's pretty much it. Um, I figured out the ratio thing quite early on and I made like a bunch of timelines. Uh, I even have a whole folder for it because I ended up having like six, seven, eight different timelines um, with different frame rates and stuff uh, just to be prepared for all the different kinds of shots I throw into it, like for the FPV. Because like while, when I fly FPV, I fly a lot of different formats and combinations, right? Like 25 frames per second, most often 50 frames, but sometimes also 100 frames. And I want to deliver in 16 by 9 for YouTube as example, but also often for 9 to 16 for other social medias like Instagram. So I had to have a lot of different um, timelines and it just got messy, as you can already see here, right? just that I have a timeline ready for any kind of shot that I want to bring in. Um, so let's go straight to the solution that I found for myself. And this is this timeline over here. All right, let's try the same thing again, but this time with the new workflow where everything is set up the right way. Um, as you can see already, we have the 8x7, 50 frames per second timeline. So I go over here, grab my shot, which is also um, 50 frames per second, 8 by 7 ratio, and you can already see in the preview it's a uh, square, so that's good. And now we're gonna grab the Gyroflow plugin, throw it onto the footage just like before, make sure it's highlighted, and now watch what happens when I uh, activate, uh, like when I let Gyroflow load it. So, did you just see that this? Um, it did a distortion correction, but this time in a good way, the way we want it, instead of destroying the footage. And now when we want to play back the shot, okay, it's a bit laggy right now, but you can already see it's smoothed out. I, on this day I did some shots for a friend of mine, for his business, uh, they're running a graffiti um, thing, let's say short, out there and I flew my Cinebot 30 for this with the GoPro 11 on top of it. And let's just play it back without Gyroflow. Yeah, you can already see how the distortion changed and just to compare, yeah, you can see the, the wobbles. Uh, without gyro flow and now let's turn it on again so the key takeaway for me is um, that you remember that you have to have a timeline ready with the same ratio and the same frames per seconds as the shots that you want to stabilize so for fpv i mean the way i did it i set up this whole uh, da vinci project just for fpv i throw all my fpv uh, shots in there and prepare them in that project so it made sense for me to just at the start create a bunch of timelines uh, so I have one ready for any kind of shot that I throw in because I mean of course there are some different flavors but it will start to repeat right you either shoot 25 frames per second 50 frames per second the most often for me or 100 frames per second or let's say 200 frames per second um, and same with the ratios and that's uh, pretty cool now with this workflow for me. 
because I basically always shoot 8x7 on my GoPro to have the most flexibility in cutting. So for the portrait format like 9x16 or 16x9, um, that's why I always shoot basically 8x7 on the GoPro. But if you shoot on the O3 or any other camera, you can still like prepare a 16x9 of course and get it that way. It's just important that you have the right matching ratio and right matching frames per seconds for the Gyroflow DaVinci plugin to be working correctly. Um, the reason why I'm so happy about this workflow is that now I can just create my master file um, here in the 8x7, stabilize it, color grade it the way I want it and then export it and then the file that I get out of there I can just quickly grab it and re-import it in DaVinci Resolve and from there on prepare my different deliverables because let's say I want to do um, a deliverable for uh, YouTube and for uh, Instagram from the same shot then I just go and throw it let's say for Instagram I go over here into my 9x16 20 FPS 25 FPS sorry and just grab that video that I just exported, grab it like this, yeah, throw it in there. And now what I can do is, okay, for 9 by 16, it's already lined up, but as you can see, so this is the square that we got. And now I can just fill the frame with it. Okay, that's nice. Maybe I want to see more of the tree on the right side. I can just go like that. And of course, you can also keyframe that, right? So that's a big part for me um, like having a file that is already embedded with the stabilization after I have more freedom to keyframe and move without messing with the stabilization of the gyroflow plugin um, so that's pretty cool but again yeah I can use the same file go into a different format a different ratio throw it in there and prepare it for something else um, let's see, show, right, fill the frame, and so right for the 16x9 I will get more headroom, I can choose to show more of the sky or show more of the bottom, so you have a little bit of um, freedom, uh, creative freedom, how you want to present the shot, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for me, that I can create one file in DaVinci Resolve, and let's say for Let's say I'm at the point where for Instagram I love the color grade, I will go for that, but for YouTube I want to change the color grade. I can still go back into that timeline, go into that file and change the color grade um, and export it again. I just prefer it that way. I mean, I think there is no right or wrong uh, for something like this. Uh, it's up to you, but I thought I'm just going to quickly show you my workflow and it if you want, of course, you can use it. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, you would do me a big favor if you subscribe or hit the like button. And see you next time.